The headlines, NCC workers' case to be heard next week. Demolition crews move in at Sam Lord's and Arm Roberts hit Northern Gas Station. Welcome to Nation News for Tuesday, September the 22nd, 2015, the 60th anniversary of deadly Hurricane Janet. The date has been set, finally, for the Employment Rights Tribunal to hear the case brought by about 80 former National Conservation Commission workers who were fired last year. Tribunal Chairman Hal Gollop said the class action case will begin on Wednesday next week at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre. He said the venue was chosen so the public could attend the three days of public hearings. Close to 200 workers were sent home last year during government's cuts uh, but most of them have since accepted their packages. The case is centered on claims that those regents were not chosen on merit. Mr. Gollop said that of the 141 cases before the tribunal, 97 were awaiting paperwork. Eight have also been discontinued and two settled. The procedural steps must be followed. Um, that cannot be too uh, heavily stressed because if there is procedural impropriety, if the procedure is not complied with, it can result in the breakdown of the whole decision, of the whole case. Demolition crews have rolled on to Samlord's Castle to clear the property ahead of construction of a new 450-room hotel. Stuart Lane, the CEO of the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc., which is responsible for the site, said it would take about two weeks to clear the 57-acre property. It's slated to be a, a large hotel. It's, it's 450 suites. Um, we will also restore the castle um, to its former glory. And it will be something that I believe will not only enhance our tourism product offering, but will benefit all Barbadians. This is a cultural heritage asset, and we are proud to be able to say that we will restore it and make it available for Barbadians. No firm date has been announced for the actual start of construction by a Chinese company, but officials hope that the new hotel will be ready for the 2018 winter tourist season. The nine-bedroom iconic castle will also be restored as part of the $400 million project, which is being funded by a loan from China's Exim Bank. Officials say more than 1,000 permanent jobs will be created. Barbados has been home of the CARICOM Development Fund for the first six years of its operation, but hasn't sought funding from the entity during that time. But that may be about to change. The CARICOM Development Fund started in August 2009 to provide financial or technical assistance to disadvantaged countries, regions and sectors. Chairman of the Board of Directors, Dr. Alvin Hilaire, said countries like Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica made significant contributions to the fund but had allowed other countries, effectively the OECS, with more pressing needs to access financing first. You had other countries, you had Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, uh, Suriname and Jamaica, who in the first cycle said, listen, we will recognize that the other countries are in more of a disadvantaged state, so let's hold back on our own um, call for funds. So we will contribute, but we will not call on the funds for, um, for support. In the second phase, we have to work that out because things, things, are, um, things are changing, as you know. Countries are in a much more difficult situation, and some countries have indicated, listen, we may want to, to tap into the funds, so we have to, to work that out. So this means that uh, there's even more need for, for financing. Dr. Hilaire spoke on the sidelines of the fifth meeting of contributors and development partners at the Acro Beach Hotel. 
The Winston Scott Polyclinic will undergo an industrial cleaning this weekend. You may recall nurses walked off the job on Monday as the air conditioning units were not working. At the time, NUPW Acting Deputy General Secretary Delcia Burke said the clinic was in a horrible condition and called for it to be cleaned. The clinic will close at 6 p.m. on Friday and all day Saturday to facilitate the cleaning. Meanwhile, Queen Elizabeth Hospital kitchen staff who walked out on Friday protesting the heat are still off the job. New extractor fans have been installed, but NUPW President Akani McDowell says they were requesting a tour of the facility to ensure conditions are good for workers. Two armed men robbed a gas station at Bentham, St. Lucie on Monday night and escaped with an undisclosed sum of money. Police say the Rubis gas attendant was attacked just before 9 o'clock by the men, one carrying a gun and the other a cutlass. In other crime news, officers are investigating two injuries from three shootings, which took place between Saturday and Monday. Shaquille Aline was shot in his backside on Saturday night in the city, and Carl Bess was shot three times in the back at South District St. George, also on Saturday. He is in the QEH in serious but stable condition. There was also a shootout between two men in the Westbury Cemetery on Monday, but no one was injured. An official of the drug agency of the OAS came to Barbados and guess what? He was told that you can get just about any kind of drug on our beaches. Attorney General Adriel Brathwood has been speaking about a conversation with an officer of the Washington-based Inter-American Drug Abuse Control Commission. Ziggy and, and his team were here and one of his partners spent some time um, on the beach and what he reported back to me was that it didn't matter what he asked for, um, drug-wise, that, you know, the guys were saying, we can get it for you. Um, so we, as a country, we cannot assume that, you know, that coke is available and marijuana full stop. Uh, we should assume that, that, in fact, that all these designer drugs that uh, Zig and his team will talk about this week, that they're available here in Barbados. And, and that's the urgency for us as policymakers to respond. The minister was speaking at a five-day national seminar on drug production. And now, here's Hidden Gill with our weekly commentary. The Future Trust Center has deemed last Saturday's cleanup Barbados event a resounding success. We join in congratulating them and the many volunteers from all walks of life who turned up for the effort. But there's an alarming side to this. According to the Trust, they collected 20,000 pounds of sargassum seaweed, more than 4,000 pounds of garbage, and about 1,500 pounds of recyclable material. The amount of garbage which was collected surely indicates we have a long way to go as a country in teaching how to properly dispose of refuse. As good an initiative as Cleanup Barbados is, we can't just designate one day a year for a national cleanup. We have to keep Barbados clean every day. Finally, arachnophobia, or the fear of spiders, is real to many people. Too real. In the case of a woman in Indiana who leapt from a moving car after noticing a spider on her shoulder. Her nine-year-old son moved from the back seat to try to stop the car, but pressed the accelerator instead, and the car slammed into a school bus. He was treated at a hospital for minor head injuries. The bus had no passengers, and the driver was not injured. The Sheriff's Department in Indiana has not determined yet if the woman will face charges as a result of the incident. And that's where we in Nation News for Tuesday. For more news, log on to nationnews.com as well as YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. And remember to pick up your Midweek Nation on Wednesday or subscribe to our e-paper.